in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed what is the implication and what does it take to be? What does it take to be transformed? Are you ready? Those who become and those who are transformed are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs. Those who contend for transformation are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Just because a mindset has been there for a long time does not mean it is correct. Africa, we need to trust God for grace. We are people of grace and potential. Now, let me tell you, when I talk of dropping wrong mindsets, I'm not respectfully speaking. I don't necessarily mean picking Western mindsets. I mean picking scriptural mindsets. You can drop an African mindset and pick a Western mindset and you are still in the same place spiritually. So I don't mean getting a more technological error. That's not what I'm teaching. Africa's error may be crude. Then you now pick and advance a technological error. It's still error. Are we together? You will never contend for transformation until you are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Let me confess to you up front that this is very, very hard because we usually are emotionally connected to our mindsets. If no matter how wrong it is, there is an emotional affinity you have towards your mindset. And stripping yourself of that mindset to embrace a new scriptural and superior belief system is almost like asking you to remove your clothes and stand naked. There are people who would rather die than to contend for scriptural transformation. Respectfully speaking, we come, there are six geopolitical zones within Nigeria and I submit to you that every geopolitical zone has its blessing and advantage territorially speaking, but every geopolitical zone has its limitation programmed by demon spirits territorially. If you want to rise and do much for the kingdom, you have to obtain grace from God to put a superior reference that is higher than your territory. The, the scripture God gave me that delivered me from the limitation of my territory was John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. That thing changed my life. Sent from God. That means the physical point of my arrival is not really the basis for my victory. It is where I came from. I never came from heaven. I was sent. He didn't say there was a man who came from God. That means my arrival was the conclusion of an intelligent discussion between divinity. They saw the space that my relevance can produce. As far as kingdom come, I was sent with intention. When I arrived the earth, my parents gave me a name. Lovely name, by the way. May God bless them. They are watching. Next verse, verse 7. The same came for a witness. So it tells you immediately the basis of your victory. He that cometh from above, he says, is above all. And I made up my mind that I refuse to be limited 
by the thinking and the influences that are associated with my region. No. Is someone learning? A young lady was crying and complaining to her mom about life and she just felt that life was unfair and she was shouting and yelling at the mom and the mom didn't say a word. The mom just went in front of a, a gas cooker, a four, four burner, the one that has four compartments and the mom put three, three pots and put water on them while the lady was yelling, mommy, are you hearing me? Life is unfair. And in one of the pots that was boiling, she put an egg, E double G. In one of the pots that was boiling there, she put coffee. Are we together? And then in one of the pots, I can't remember again what she put there. Rat? Carrots, thank you. Are we together? And she allowed it for a few, for a few, maybe some time. And then she called the young lady and opened the pots and said, tell me what you see. And she found out that number one her observation was there was fire under the pot on all all three pots so they went through the same situation of heat are we together but for the egg that was fragile and could just you know fall to the ground and you would lose it it had now become hard and strong you could even peel the back and you would not destroy it for the carrots that seemed to be very hard now you could almost bend it and it would bend like this. But she noticed something strange with the coffee. The coffee looked like the smallest of the seeds there. And when she put it, the entire water had turned to the coffee color. And she said all of them were subjected to the same situation. One influenced the system and turned it to look like the color. The other one became a victim, became hard. The other one became soft, but the other one said, I would not only change, I would transform the system. Is someone learning now? You can be one of these three. Some of you were very hard now. Some of you were very soft now. Some of you look very small and you're looking at yourself and say, small me in such a system. Learn from the coffee seed. It transformed everything there. Same thing happens with salt. You pick a pinch of salt and put it around and turn it and that's it. You don't see it again, but you taste the food. It will establish its presence there. Even if you keep, even if the food spoils, the taste of salt will still be there. There are certain foods when they spoil, they will taste like something else. But as for salt, it will still be there. Is someone learning? You must be willing to drop age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs. Number four, those who become, those who contend for transformation are those who are ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress. Are we together? Let me take it again. Those who become, those who are transformed, are those who are willing and are prepared to face the consequences and to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Let me tell you the truth. Contending for growth and progress comes with consequences sometimes unfavorable consequences but if you really want to be transformed you must be ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress daniel chapter 3 for sake of time let's start from verse 6 then we'll jump to verse 12 and we'll continue till i ask you to stop this was shadrach meshach and abednego remember King Nebuchadnezzar, there was a 90 feet statue of pure gold that was built. And he said at the sound of whatever it is now, they should bow down. They would have bowed down and remained there. No promotion, no increase. But here it is. The Bible says, whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall at the same hour be thrown into the burning fiery furnace now go to verse 12 the bible says there are certain jews they were reporting them now 
and O king, they have not regarded you. They have not served your gods. They have not worshipped the golden image that you have set up. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar heard this. He was angry. Listen to me. There are consequences for desiring to go forward. When Jesus said, let us go to the other side, the consequence of that decision was there was a storm. The disciples almost lost their life. Advancement is not convenient. Transformation is not convenient. It will change many things about you. When you make up your mind that you want to carry genuine spiritual power, you make up your mind that you want to be learned and sound in scripture, I submit to you, it will change many things. Are we together? They brought these men before the king, 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them and said, is it true that you have violated my commands? 15, watch this now. He now gave them one last chance. Doesn't it look like what life does? Choose to remain here and be comfortable or go through the controversy that comes with advancement. 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you on this matter. Look at this gentleman. 18. He said, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand. 18. But if not, but if not, I know based on the word of God that as I advance into this business, as I advance in ministry, this is what should be. But if not, I rather fail following God than to mark time in fear. Those who, listen, those who move forward and are transformed are people who are willing to go through the discipline and the consequences. There are many of you, please listen to me. There are many of you making a decision for Jesus and making a decision for a meaningful life may cost you the sponsorship of those who are currently helping you. They will make up your mind their minds and say I will never help you there are many people who are of many different faiths who came to Jesus Christ and their family members warned them and say listen we're giving you one last chance think about it and remain with status quo and find the comfort or make up your mind and they made up their minds and for five years nothing changed they really suffered as a result let me tell you the truth advancement comes with severe consequences making up your mind for Jesus. You would think that after such a bold statement, God would not even allow the story to continue. He would step in. Do you know how frustrating it is to stand and defend the name of the Lord and the trouble they told you would happen still happens? As though God were not watching. 19. Learn something tonight. Nebuchadnezzar was angry at what he perceived to be their disdain and he commanded that they should hit the fire seven times hotter let's rush 20. he commanded that the boys be cast into the fire next verse and the boys were bound as at the time they were tying them brothers and sisters god was watching in heaven i wonder what they were saying you thought that they were not afraid they just said god you will come it's a lie they were humans they were shaking like a leaf so this is how we're going to die. But Lord, we defended you. How many of you know that there were people who stood before terrorists and they told them, renounce your faith and we'll kill you. They said, we will not. They shot them and they died. Hmm. There are consequences when you want to go forward, my people. There are people today who would have been billionaires with compromise. But they gave up billions. Everybody called them fool, including we pastors. They say, you, there's a way you have done this thing. You are, you are really stupid. And they felt stupid later on. Because they thought that at the end of living a nice life, their superior will call them and say, I've watched you. I shall bless you. They say, now that your tenure is over, get out of this place. Let the person who walk with us come. Do you know how difficult it is when you're loving God makes you look stupid when you're honoring God makes you look stupid you would have compromised and by now you would have had a job but for three years you have refused what of the politician who would have compromised and become a governor or a senator he was given the offer and he said no for the sake of my faith 
Is someone learning? Transformation is costly. It's not just sitting in your room and changing states. You must be ready to face and endure the consequences. Let's finish this scripture. 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the fiery furnace was put so hot, it slew those that the men threw. 23. And the three boys fell down bound in the burning fires. There are times where God can stop you from even entering the fire. But there are times, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, you will still enter that fire. But trust him enough. Trust him enough. So you are making up your mind. You will never follow any man for money again. You are making up your mind. You are going to serve the Lord and have a, dignity, a, a destiny of dignity and color. And your friends can warn you. You know that your accommodation in Abuja, you know how it, it, and where are you going to get 1.2 million from? And you make up your mind. And then your rent expires. And you drop your prayer request in a miracle service. And afterwards, your landlord is waiting for you. You flog it out and nothing seems to happen. You have a choice to go back. But I've said it here. The same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to move forward. Whether you go back or go forward, you are not where you were and you are not where you need to be. It is wiser to continue. Is someone learning? 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men who were loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They have no heart, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I don't know everything about God, but there is something I know about God that when God decides to honor your pressing into Him, I've taught it here. For many years, you will look like a fool, but the day your deliverer arises, for many years, your church may not seem to grow because you have refused. You will not go and dapple your hand and collect any power, whatever. For many years, they will not promote you in the office because they told you that they should corporately collect bribe and you refuse. They insulted you for being a Christian. You cried and said this and that and that. God can arise, oh. He does arise. And when God arises, he said, let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered. 26. Watch this. Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, this and that and that, come forth. And they came out in the midst of the fire. 27. We're stopping at 30. The princes, governors, captains, and all those people were there. The Bible says, not a hair of their head was singed. Their bodies, the fire had no power and there was no smell of fire that passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave a decree by reason of their courage to remain. For someone God is speaking to you, remain. Turning back is wasting the destiny of the thousands connected to you. You have already started the journey of transformation. Don't go back. When your father got to this point, he was tired. The mockery was too much. He had to go back. Now you are suffering it. By the time you go back, your children will suffer it too. It is better to press and finish. Do you know, I vowed to God and I said, everything, if there are any negative things that came from my background, I would rather pay the price and go through it as a person. Let me be the one to stand by God and win that war. That all who come from me and all the generations after us, are we together now? Yes. Some of us may need to make that decision. The, the lineage of poverty that you came from. Now you want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Sometimes it may mean sacrificing 10 years of your comfort to contend for transformation. But if and when you do that, you would have started a dynasty of kingdom wealth and blessing. Are you willing to go that far? In many parts of Africa, when the missionaries came and they brought the gospel, some of them, when they waved their wives goodbye, they really meant it. Their wives knew they would not come back. They knew they would not come back, and yet they still went. Hallelujah. You must be ready to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Who is this that is staying in our house? You are always praying. 
You are not a pastor, but sir, you know the background. Don't pray anything. If you are going to continue praying and continue studying, you are getting out of my house. And sometimes you are going to have to make that choice. And you go out of your house, you carry your little bag, and you are strolling like a madman in the middle of the night. And you're saying, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Listen to my, the part of the teaching that I taught here in Koinonia, when God is silent. It is a painful thing when God is silent. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. He can be silent. The call for you at that point is to keep changing. Keep changing. Lord, but I love you. I thought by now I would have been able to pay this rent. I thought by now ministry would have opened up. I thought the business would have worked. Let me tell you the truth. There are many times in your journey towards destiny actualization that you will not have answers. Don't be under pressure to give answers. Wait for the answer to come. Especially the answer of where is your God. Anybody who asks you where is your God, if you answer it, you are wrong. You are not the one who should answer that question. <clears throat> the moment they say where is your God, that answer should be transferred back to God. You've heard me say, if you take the shame, you have been taking the glory. You can't be taking, God cannot be taking the glory and then you take the shame. Whoever takes the glory must take the shame together. You claim you are a man of God. Nobody has been healed. The people who are blessed, today 10 members, today 50 members, and someone will tell you there's something I can do and in one month your ministry will change. And sometimes it can be tempting because you are a human being. Somebody will say, I told you five years ago you will be a failure. This God thing. Remember, when you were on campus, I told you this stupidity will land you in trouble. Now, 10 years later, you are pastoring 20 members. I have an estate somewhere. There are times it looks foolish to stand on God's side. But when you stand there as surely as the sun rises after night, I can tell you your deliverer will come. And when he comes, he will come in grand style. He will pick you in the presence of all who saw you. I'm speaking this prophetically for someone because for someone you came to church and every time you hear people prophesy, maybe you are a mother outside, maybe you are someone, maybe you are a man of God still in your spiritual, your walk with God and sincerely things are not working. Every time you see people testify here, you can't say they are lying but from their testimony you keep, you keep asking God, is it that you are not seeing me? I come early for miracle service by 10 o'clock I am here. Nobody calls me, nobody prophesies. Other people are falling down and rising. I'm just there watching them as if God is not aware of me. And then, instead of things getting better, it even gets worse after the miracle service. It's like the louder I shout amen, the more it does not happen. Can I tell you, it is okay to cry. It is not unscriptural. Even Jesus wept. But one thing you are not allowed to do is to draw back. Listen very carefully. The Bible says, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, it will not overwhelm you. Then it says, when you walk through the fire, when it has to do with fire, you don't run. You walk through the fire. And I, I, I wish God would tell you, you only walk for one year. Sometimes you will walk for a long time. A long time. A lonely path that does not make sense when Job was sitting down ladies and gentlemen do you know what it meant if I were to interpret Job's situation I would say this man must have been an evil man nemesis would have caught him the world would say the law of karma has caught him and that was a sincere man who sat down to the point that his last support you know what it means when your wife looks at you and says listen you know I love you We've been on this journey for a long time but please i prefer you dead so i can rest if some naysayer is talking somewhere you don't care but now your wife and job said though he slay me hmm. though he slay me yet will i trust him though he slay me 
some of you your classmates will come and see you and after 10 20 25 years of graduation they are coming with their estates and their jeeps and everything and you are there they say what are you doing now and say well uh, we are, I'm a secretary in one church and they just nod their heads and say oh dear if you need any help please call my Nigerian office I live in Dubai now and there is a way people can say it that they rub it on your face and you just stand there and say God what is this if you have not gotten to this realm it's because there's something you are not doing right I assure you if it is the road to destiny you must meet this realm someday no these are not realms you pray away you only pray for grace to pass through it the journey of becoming only happens in that wilderness the journey of becoming does not happen when you are taking coffee and sipping no 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 it's a painful journey for many years in your life I, I let me repeat it again no matter the kind of leverage you have if it is God you are seeking and the, his kingdom there will be a level where nobody's sermon will really be able to matter to you again you will have to be the preacher and the prophet of your destiny at that point if it has not happened to you I'm informing you ahead of time because for some of you maybe you are about to enter that season remember what I taught you about trainings you have been receiving the training of one who protects so when you see warriors you say oh dear I pity these people now you are about to begin the training of a warrior go and go to NDA and see how they train military men sometimes these men are asked to roll inside mud you, you will say this is dehumanizing but they are preparing them and they kick them kick them again yes sir ah. I fear no evil by the water still my soul my heart will trust in you my heart will trust that though I walk through the valley low I fear no Even when I don't trust in it I can trust in you even when I no longer trust in the future do you know there are times people can ask you how is that future and sincerely if you are to be honest you don't even know what to say again there are times people are, are you still in the ministry will you still continue if you are honest there are times you don't have an answer hear the word of the Lord when you cannot trust in it trust in him when the boat can no longer carry you, trust in the person who is sleeping in that boat. My heart will trust in you, Lord. me there are realms you get to where no matter how strong you are your tears will not ask you again it will come by itself you will stand there courageous sometimes maybe helping others through their storms but there are times the tears will say I've tried I've waited for five years it will have to come Jesus the miracle worker who raised others from the dead on his way to becoming that king of kings and lord of lords in experience the Bible says he wept he prayed I wonder what he was saying the Bible gives us a little and he says he repeated it again father if it be thy will let me tell you there are times that this journey to destiny is very hard someone who came to marry you and he's not serious with God you would have said yes you would have married a wrong person but you would have been free you said no ten years ago until now ten years later and people will see you and say you are a stupid girl 
you would have simply married that unbeliever you stood expecting God to honor you and it's 10 years now what do you do when what people are saying about you is true though I walk through the valley organize the crusade they told you there is witchcraft within that territory that if you organize that crusade it can cost you your life and you still went souls were saved and on your way returning there was an accident how do you explain that you stood on the crusade ground and you shouted and you told them Jesus heals let me tell you this when what you believe is not yet your reality here is what to do stand 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 I'm prophesying you no, I'm not preaching some of you in the night while you are sleeping you will hear the voice of this preacher again telling you remember God spoke through him stand you are about to compromise stand you are about to abort destiny whereas heaven is clapping for you for your stamina and your endurance stand 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 politician stand man of god stand remember nobody has risen as a revivalist a revivalist in your village stand you are the one god is counting on it is painful but stand Stand. Let me sing one song for you and then we'll wrap up. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal. You're the lifter of men, lifter of men. I will hold on through the storm, and I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men. I know a man of God, very simple man of God, he's gone to be with the Lord now. Great healing man of God, loved God with all his heart. And one day, they discovered that he had cancer. And initially, he shrugged it off and waved it off. The naysayers laughed and said, thank God. What happens when your naysayers find a reason to rejoice over you? Was it not the psalmist that said, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? He says, Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me. Listen, that man's health began to deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate. And I saw the way it shook the family. This, uh, this is a believing family that loved Jesus. And finally, he couldn't stand again. And he had to go. Mm. Please hear me. The Lord sent me to bring this message. These are not popular things. But let me submit to you by God. Becoming is very difficult. Becoming. Becoming an anointed man of God. One day God will give you an instruction to fast for one month, one year, one week. There are levels of consecration that will look as if God wants to kill you. 
this anointing you see is not just by laying on of hands oh believe me you want to speak over people and swing open the gates of their destinies <laughs> There are sacrifices but those who become are those who must be willing to know that God is in this and I will go all the way I will go the way all the way all the way there are missionaries who are in Nigeria today are in parts of Africa they literally left their people left their comfort some of them resigned from jobs as successful people and they answered the call Abba my people Except you are motivated by something greater than the comfort of the now. You cannot make that sacrifice. Some of the men of God, you see that sometimes we abuse and insult. You don't know the things they left to serve the Lord. For many men of God, especially in Africa, it's not like they were total failures and they did not know what to do with their lives. Some of them were mandated by God to give up things. And they stood to bear the cross like fools some of them even unto death please sit down let's wrap up koinonia is quiet but it is the truth let's wrap up but the people that do know their god this is the scripture we're discussing we have looked at knowledge the demands to have knowledge the demands to be transformed now watch this this is the last step of the success equation and very few people ever get to this third realm because the pain of overcoming the realm of being transformed most people cannot endure to the end a few walk their way through the finish line but sadly they just stop at the level of transformation and that's why possibilities don't manifest in their lives do exploits. James chapter 1. Doing is the last step as far as destiny actualization is concerned. Action is demanded until and unless at some point in your life action is taken. You will never be able to see results. James 1, 22. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up so we can pray. He says, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Reading to 25, it says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. He was. He says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, listen carefully, and continueth therein, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Let's finish the remaining. What will happen to that man? He said, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Action. Action. The word exploits. Now, I'm not talking about the verb. There is the verb exploit, right? Which means to selfishly take advantage of another for profit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the noun, exploits. And that means I wrote here, notable, outstanding, or heroic accomplishments. Exploits. Notable, comma, outstanding, or heroic accomplishments do not forget what we are looking at the roadmap to a triumphant destiny that's the topic we're dealing with tonight and well considering for our text Daniel 11 and 32 the B part the people that do know their God they shall be strong and shall do exploits we're bringing out the revelation from the statement know be and do we said this represent the three, the tripartite junctions as far as the roadmap to an excelling life is concerned. Knowledge, number two, B, becoming, transformation. Now we're looking finally at doing. Write this down. Action requires courage. 
The first demand for doing is that you must be courageous. Action requires courage. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. Numbers 13, 30. Action requires courage. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. We heard the word. We understand what God has said. We've taken our time to understand the demands. He says, let us go up at once and possess it. It takes going up to possess. Not just talking about it. Not just meditating on it. Hearing the information and the instruction is wonderful. Meditating upon it until you believe is wonderful. But if and when you are done with becoming, the next thing is to go up at once and possess it. For we are well able. We are well able to overcome it. Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4. This scripture has blessed me for many, many years. Pay attention as I read. Deuteronomy 21 to 4. We're wrapping up. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seeth horses, chariots, and a people more than thou, it says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up from out of the land of Egypt. Reading to 4. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh to the battle, men of God, remember, you have a duty to approach and speak unto the people. Because battle is a moment of fierceness. There must be a system of encouragement and it is given to the men and the women of God. The priests, you are the ones who will speak to the people. Verse 3. And ye shall say unto them, Hear, O koinonia, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save. My God will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and say, Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and save you. Please hear me. If anyone tells you action does not require courage, that person lied to you. Action requires courage. You are touring virgin dimensions that you may never have gone there. It takes courage. Number two, action requires persistence and resilience. Do exploits. Those who do exploits are people who are persistent and resilient. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Hebrews 6, 15, please. And so, after he had patiently endured, the he being Abraham, he obtained the promise. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Galatians 6 and verse 9. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. It takes persistence and it takes resilience. The first time we had our crusade, gauging by the standard today, you would not call it a very successful meeting. Because when debt, many things went, you know, we'd be very few people, I'm not sure we were up to 50, in that entire theater for the crusade. After weeks of praying and preparing, you would look and say, this person is a failure. These people are failures. And the very next, as we were returning, God gave an instruction again to do another one. God for you. He will act as if he didn't see what happened to you. Are we together? Hmm. You gave somebody a lift, he stole your phone. By the next day, God will say, make sure you carry two people and bless them. Action requires persistence 
and resilience. Number three, action requires conviction. 2 Timothy 1.12 Action requires conviction. You will never be able to act until you are full of conviction. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, he said, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Let me tell you the truth. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. You see why transformation is very important? Because as you begin to push against these walls by faith, it will take conviction. I submit to you by the God of heaven, even if I came to Abuja here and Koinonia started and I failed, I would not return back in shame. One thing for sure I would have done is I would have gone for a retreat to verify and re-verify again. God, is it my mind? Am I just acting in the flesh or is this true? Can I tell you, there are many things that are not working now in your life, but it does not mean that God is not there. All you need to do is to stay pushing with resilience. Resilience and persistence. Number four, action requires unbending focus. Action requires unbending focus. 313 Philippians, 313. Action requires unbending focus. Brethren, I count myself, not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. Somebody say one thing. One more time, say one thing. When you are focusing on 10 things, you don't have focus. It is usually one thing at a time. There has to be something driving you. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are before me, I press. Proverbs 4.25, unbending focus. Proverbs 4.25, unbending focus. It says, let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. That means you can't run. How many of you have seen people who are running the finals of a 100 meter dash? And whether someone is insulting you or someone is clapping for you, you don't turn back. Your eyes is set on the finish line. Part of the trainings of a winner is that the moment you start looking, ah, you are clapping for me. When it has to do with the race of life, both commendation and criticism can distract. You need to remain focused. On bending focus. Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. Action. Do exploits. Doing exploits requires unbending focus. Jesus said unto them, No man having put his hand on the or to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Focus. Remember Lot's wife. The Bible warns us about the wife of Lot. She was already on her way out of Sodom and Gomorrah with the warning not to turn back. He says, and if any draw back, Hebrews 10, I believe, 38 or so. And if any draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Hallelujah. If any draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Finally, doing exploits requires patience. Hebrews 6, 12, patience. Hebrews 6 12 and that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience that's what it takes to inherit the promises first Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 we're wrapping up first Peter 5 and verse 10 but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus listen he says after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect entire now establish you strengthen you and then settle you after you have suffered a while and remain pushing praying pressing acting he says he will make you entire perfect establish you strengthen you settle you 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. It says, For I reckon, 8.18, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Action requires courage. Action, doing exploits, requires persistence and resilience in the face of negative situations, discouraging situations. Action requires conviction. Action requires unbending focus. And finally, action requires patience. Now, let's look at Daniel 11.32 as we prepare to pray. Now you will understand this scripture. But the people that do know, they shall be and they shall do. This is my message tonight. The roadmap to a triumphant destiny, to a triumphant life, involves knowing becoming and doing in that order you can't do without becoming you can't become without knowing so let me read it this way for you to do exploits you need to be strong and for you to be strong you need to know in this case they are God if you ever see anybody doing exploits know that that person must have been strong he became to do and for that person to have become are we together that person must have submitted himself to knowledge a naive medical student goes to the university as a school living certificate holder with the potential of becoming a doctor what happens knowledge knowledge they keep pumping knowledge for over six seven years and the medical doctor is evolving out of the ordinary person there is a becoming happening and do you know within the limit of his practice he will not be allowed to do certain things because he's still becoming sooner or later he gets accustomed to the medical practice and then by the time he is done he's now given liberty to start doing and then the process reverses and the process continues again even though he is a graduate, he is not called a consultant. Is that correct? Knowledge starts again. Another version of becoming happens and then he can do exploits. Greater knowledge, greater becoming, greater exploits. Small knowledge, small becoming, small exploits. High level knowledge, high level transformation, high level exploits. The choice is yours. I said before you life and death. I set before you a mediocre destiny and a life of kingdom exploits that brings great glory to God and dignity to you and posterity, judging you faithful by reason of your finishing strong. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. I remind you again as I started that in destiny, you must know how to fight. You must know how to finish. You must know how to keep. Please rise up on your feet. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change. You're the lifter of men. If you can, for one minute, may I request that you hold the hand of someone just close to you. We're about to pray. Please, let's minimize movement. There, let me just make a very important announcement. Please, as much as possible, avoid walking out before the service is over. It's spiritual indiscipline. If you have stayed for no matter how long, the extra five minutes you spend will not change anything, not your going home, not whatever. It's in discipline. Are we together? In many assemblies, they close the door, they do whatever. We don't have to do that. Please. There is nothing that is such an emergency. You're rushing to get a car. You're rushing to do this. One prophetic word in closing the service may be your word. God can reserve your word to the end. 
I notice that every time we make altar calls, you see, once we're done, many people are, it's an attitude of a baby Christian. And for some of you who do that, some of you are pastors, you are leaders, avoid that. Hallelujah. Yes. Let us close with decency and then you leave. It does not take more than a minute to do an altar call, more than a minute or two to say a prayer. I just needed to say this. Don't do it in Koinonia. Don't do it anywhere except for very specific reasons. Maybe you're a guest minister and you need to leave or some kind of thing. There is a system that allows you, but ordinarily don't do that. This is part of the kingdom culture that we must learn. Hallelujah. For some of you, you can be living whereas the people God brought you to church to meet after church are there. But because you are rushing, you are rushing into nowhere. It shouldn't be so, please. I love you and that's why I want you to receive. It's a culture that you should not practice. It is very, very wrong. Whether you are outside, you are inside, discipline yourself as much as possible. If you have endured through two, three, four hours, five more minutes, I'm not sure. If it's an emergency, that's fine. But aside that, please discipline yourself. So stay and join the prayer and let us pray. I owe a responsibility to teach you the culture of the kingdom. And in this house, we're a house of order and we're a house of honor. So even when you invite people to come, please let them learn. We don't believe in policing people and using force, but revelation should upgrade you to a realm of maturity. Are we together? So we'll pray just two prayer points tonight. Number one, you're going to cry to God and say, Father, I obtain grace to contend for knowledge and the transformation that comes with that knowledge and then the grace to act. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying from the depth of your heart. Shalika paroska dibaleyasa. Lift your voice to Jesus. Thank you, Father. The people that do know, I obtain grace to know. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, I receive the meekness that helps me to know. I obtain grace to ask questions that help me to know. I obtain grace to be willing to sacrifice my time, my energy, my resources to buy the truth so that I will know. I obtain grace to place value on knowledge and to retain superior knowledge. Now pray on becoming. I contend for the grace to become before doing. I recognize that this is not the best version of me. I lay aside my current failures, my current successes, and I press in the name of Jesus, becoming a greater spiritual version, a greater financial version. a greater intellectual version i upgrade my references kingdom worthy models and references that guide and challenge my transformation in the name of jesus i give up age-long limiting unscriptural anti-destiny beliefs and i embrace superior beliefs in the name of jesus i obtain grace to face and endure the consequences that come with growth, that come with transformation. Now pray for exploits. I receive grace to be courageous. Courageous. Even when it does not look like it. To hold on to the word of God and to believe. I receive grace to be persistent and resilient. I receive grace to be a person, a man of God, a businessman, a family man, a politician with convictions. Convictions that provide the energy, the drive to take action. I receive grace to be of unbending focus. Unbending focus. And in the name of Jesus, I receive the patience, the staying power to remain until the word of God manifests in my life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Last prayer point. I want you to declare, 
that your prophetic destiny, the place that has been earmarked for your prophetic destiny, if it requires a fight, declare that you are a victor in Christ. If it is a race, require, declare that you run with the speed. He says, he says, he makes my feet like hinds feet, that you run and redeem time and your bishopric that you will keep it and none will take. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. The grace to fight a good fight of faith. The grace to run with the speed of, of, of a gazelle. The speed of, of, of a, the fastest animal. To run with it in the name of Jesus and with the strength of an ox. The grace to keep the faith to keep the call, to remain, to stay, to be strong till the end. For in Jesus' name I pray. Now very quickly, our time is up. There are people here who are yet to surrender their lives and their everything to Jesus. Whilst you heard the word coming, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you telling you that you need to make your ways right. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Christ, but right now I need a rededication. Any of those two categories, whether you are inside, remember, the first person to know is God, not just your destiny helpers, not just an information, the people that know their God. And you are saying, Apostle, I cannot really say I know my God. This is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. I want to make this altar call right now. Our time is up. As I count one to five, I want you to leave your seat, whether you are inside or outside. I want you to come and stand here very quickly. Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. And don't wait for someone to come before you follow them to come. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I begin my counting now. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. God bless you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. If you're coming rush, please come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning. You can start afresh again. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Come and join them. You can have the assurance of salvation this night. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm about to lead them to pray. So if you are coming, please run. You may need to double up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to salute you for making this courageous decision we just thought that it takes courage to take action and you have taken a very noble action this is the wisest decision that any man can make under the sun thank you for the courage to have made this decision may i request that you please lift your right hand that includes those who are watching from home those who are watching by way of television even by way of a rebroadcast it is never too late to surrender your all and your everything to Jesus. Please lift your right hand and say this after me. Let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart. Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need to know you. I declare that I cannot help myself. But I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. The Lord bless and honor your prayer, and I declare by the authority of Scripture, that you are bona fide recipients of eternal life. You'll go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus' name. May I please request that you follow the counselors. You're in front here, they are by my right. May God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, before I speak over your life, finally, 
just to remind you that this um, this week on Friday will be hello precious people of God trust you are doing well by the grace of God we thank God for yet another day to spend time with him another day to commune with him I want us to take a short exercise and that is I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel this video to others and they will also be a blessing also let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12 Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days and then caused the day spring to know its place now this tells us of the great opportunities of the great blessings we enjoy as children of god when we speak into our day and so it is what we are about to do open your heart be alert prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of god apostle joshua selman also if you are new here hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell keep sharing this message abroad keep sharing on facebook keep sharing on youtube to invite others to join us as we bless the world you are a blessing thank you